This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So glad to be with you again. We're going to be in Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 15, talking about two men that came into this world. The first one being Adam, who brought sin into this world. The second one being Jesus Christ, who brought righteousness into this world. If you'll follow on with the scripture, I'm going to read uh, from 15 to 21, and then I'm going to cover the points of the two different things the two did on this earth. It said, but not as the offense also as a free gift. For if through the offense of one many died, that was through Adam, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one man that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses under justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense, one judgment came unto all men in condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all men under justification of life. You notice that word free several times in there. It is the gift. It is a gift. Gifts are free. If it is a gift, it's free. For as by one man uh, disobedience many made sinners, so by obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin aboundeth, uh, grace much more did abound. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's look in that chapter at those verses we just read. We read them, but we did not see exactly what they said. But let's look at what exactly what they said. It said Adam was the head of the old creation. That's what it said. And Christ is the head of the new creation. Read it again yourself. Get your Bible out. Get your Romans out. Get chapter 5 up. And start in verse 15. Adam sinned. Christ did not. Adam brought the unrighteousness on the world. He sinned. Christ did not sin. He brought the righteousness back into the world. Adam, by one sin, made many sinners. That meant that every single person after Adam that came along that was created by Adam's seed was a sinner. And Christ, by the act of obedience, made many righteous. Now let me tell you what. Adam made all people sinners. And Christ would make all people righteous if all people would accept it. It's a gift that you have to take. It's not just thrown out here for everybody to trample on. It is a gift held out by the hand of Jesus and said, if you will take it, I will give it to you. And how do you take it? You realize you're a sinner and say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. And then you have partaken of that gift. And now, with that gift, there is one thing that comes. And that is the necessity to study that gift you've been given which is this book. The Bible then becomes your love letter. If you were walking along the street and you found a love letter and you opened it up and your name wasn't on it, it wouldn't matter how much mush was in it. I love you, XXS, kiss you, ha, ha, ha. It mean anything to you. But if your name was on it, it mean everything in the world to you. And that's what the Bible is. The Bible's a love letter to 
a saved person, a Christian, a Christ-like person. The more they read the Bible, the more Christ-like they can become. And that's what's important, to become Christ-like. Adam was made a living soul. Christ was made a quickening spirit. Now Adam was a living soul on this earth and Christ became a quickening spirit on this earth to quicken anybody that touches him. Anybody that touches Jesus that asks him, he will come in and sup with them and them with him, he with them and them with him. Adam was of the earth, Christ was of the Lord from heaven. Adam was of the earth. He was earthly. He was sensual. He was a sensual being who in his heart lifted up his heart against God and said, I'm not, I'm not going to, I know you told me don't touch that thing, but I'm going to do it. Adam did it intentionally. Eve was beguiled and Adam intentionally took of it. Adam brought death and Christ brings eternal life. Now Adam brought eternal death. What is eternal death? Eternal death is after the body dies, you go and you're placed in hell for a period of time. And then when a judgment comes, you're taken out of there and you're judged according to your works and you're cast back into hell into the place where you'll be. If you study the Bible, you'll find out that hell has degrees. Just as so, just as much as heaven has degrees, hell has degrees. There will be a place you can be. You might be on the bottom of the pile, you might be on the top, you might be in the hottest part of the fire, you might not be. But you're going to be in the fire. Fire is fire, whether it's the hottest or not. But, so, there is a degree there. And uh, Adam passed a sinful nature to his offspring, and Christ imparts a sinless nature. A sinless nature. In this same physical body, we can be a sinful creature, doing all the things the devil would do, all the things of the world, robbing, stealing, cheating, murdering, lying, all of the stuff that does, everything. But if God be in you, then you're not, you're not doing those things. You're doing things that please God. Listen to this. Uh, Adam brought condemnation and Christ brought justification. Just as if I never sinned. <laughs> Woo! Man, just as if I never sinned. Wow. Man, how would you like to go before a judge? And he said, it's all gone. Nothing's, there's nothing on your record. Nothing. Nothing. Period. Not a thing. It was cast into the sea of forgetfulness. I can't even look at it. Wow. Wouldn't that be something? And it is something. Ah. Adam lost the grace and favor of God, which he had originally when God came in the garden and talked with Adam. Adam had grace of God, and God came in the garden and talked with Adam, walked and talked with Adam. And Adam lost that grace and Christ restored grace to men. Christ restored that grace so that you and I can walk and talk with God. We can have fellowship with Him. We can have all our needs and our wants and our things met that need to be met. You say your wants, if your wants are spiritual wants, if your wants are proper, God will answer your wants. Death reigned through Adam Life reigns through Christ. Death reigned through Adam. But life reigns through Christ. That means that our eternal life is in Jesus Christ. If we're not in him, we're facing eternal death after the death of this body. Eternal death is complete separation from God for eternity. That's what eternal death is. Just as if you were never born on this earth. Because when this earth is done with, when after the thousand year reign God's done with this earth, it'll be just as if you never existed. It will never be thought of again. It will never be mentioned again. Nobody in the, in the future that knew you before or nothing, you are gone, 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 gone. Period. And will be in hell forever 
with no options to get out. Adam caused sin to abound. Christ causes grace to abound. And grace is what covers sin. Grace covers sin. My time's come and gone. I must go now. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.